Join me in 15 minutes. The creation is not made for himself, for itself, or for himself, as the case may be. For the case of man, and for the case of other things that are in creation. Creation is made for the creator. So the scripture said in the book of Revelations that for his pleasure, we and all things are what? Are what? That means um, you cannot possibly. Uh, the thing about the creator finding pleasure is that you can only find pleasure when your creator finds pleasure in you. So if, if it is true, it will mean that the creator is the focal point. He brings definition, he brings interpretation, he brings understanding. Including to what, including on matters that borders on your own life. So if somebody comes and says, it's my own life, I can live my life, I can do the way I want. That person is so wrong. He's so wrong that after some time, he will be a mutation of himself. Nobody, no creation can run independent of the creator. As a matter of fact, the day you declare that kind of autonomy, you will notice that you will lose your manual. You will begin to malfunction. If you are with me, say amen. amen. In my own opinion, people like Michael Jackson is supposed to follow the order of Benny Hinn. Because his worship, is, is it not worship? You worship and people fall under power. How many of you have seen Michael Jackson video where people are falling under? People who are falling everywhere. I say, ah. If people fall, you need to ask them what made you fall. Have you asked that question before? Some people never show up, they fall. Some people came to our 24 hours. We, somebody said, how can you pray for five hours, four hours, 30 minutes? You did not even drop mic. Let people drink water. So when, when I now shouted, power, 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 they now fell and stayed there found one corner that is close to that speaker, fell there, and then slept for like one hour and woke up. You need to ask the person, what made you to what? Because Michael Jackson makes men to fall too. We need to know. We need to know. Sometimes if people fall, it's not impartation. It's demons that are coming out. Demons, 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 demons. The problem, the reason why we don't say demons, demons all the time is so that we will not make here a demon, demon fellowship center. We are not too interested in demons. We are interested in removing them, not exalting so much of their presence or whatever. But I bring you news that you are more troubled than demons than you even know. That's actually the truth. A young pastor met me. He went to his village and destroyed all the idols there. The nun came in the night. They wanted to kill him. He went somewhere in the north and told them. They told him, the person we know around here that can administer help to you is me. So he ran. When he came, I looked at him. I, I said, because he was anointed, he went and destroyed the altar. So the demons were now looking for him to kill him. He was praying, he was dying. Amen. Before God showed him mercy. Another one now had issue. Those times we started early with the person he is working with. And the person now went to Ido and took his name to Ido. He came here. He said that I prayed for him. As soon as I laid hands on him, I started contending with the Ido that they took his name to. I can literally feel it. The guy is now enjoying. He, oh, you remember the guy? Ah, he's now enjoying. He's flexing everywhere. Meanwhile, 
he would have died. There are signs of transitions. If, if you don't know, as the first speaker said in this, our 50 days, if you don't know that God has moved, you will be where God used to be. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you don't know that God has moved, you will be where God used to be. And God is not obligated to do something where you are. He is obligated... His work is only tied to where he is presently. His present emphasis. He's a moving God. If you're with me, say amen. amen. He's a moving God. And when he moves, our own demand is to move with him. When God moves from one emphasis to another, from one location to another, from one territory to another, from one life to another, are you getting the point? We call it transition. Transition is not because you moved from Lagos to Newick. Transition is because God moved. Transition is not because you moved. It is because what? God has moved. God moved, and once God moves, it becomes what? Transition. And if you don't move with God, the consequences is much. You'll be looking at your life. You cannot, you cannot say one thing wrong that you did. Are you getting the point? You can't say one thing wrong that you did, but you just noticed that everything is going down. It seems as if you are left behind. But you look at your life, you can't find one thing that you, you can actually say that you did wrong. Do you know why? God, you were, God left you at yesterday. And you can be laboring so much on where God was yesterday. And then you see people that are where he is today. It will seem as if they are doing less than you are doing. Do you know the problem? God, you see, you need to realize that the real work of God, if, you know the work of God, how many of you can do the work of God here? If you can do the work of God, raise your hand. Okay, you, are, you have done the work of God before. You have, okay, you are working for God. Raise your hand now. <laughs> These people don't deny me. <laughs> when I never work for God, Leonard, you have worked for God. You have worked for God. I, I know you. You have worked for God. Raise your hand. <laughs> I don't know what make I say what I want to say. <laughs> how, okay, how do I ask this question so I will have customers? Okay, you have done something in the name of God. Raise your hand. I think this is better. Ah! Nah, lie. <laughs> Who raised his hand? <laughs> so the, the point is this. Nobody, are you with me? Nobody can do the work of God. It's only God himself that can do his work. That is why. Are you getting the point? I have said it before. This is a prayer. This is a house of prayer. But I need you to know that prayer is nothing on its own. Removed away from God. I'm telling you that when God moves away from prayer, you can pray 12 hours and nothing. You will become more dry. A sister met me many years ago and said she, that she went to, to mountain. And when she went to the mountain, as she is praying, she is getting dry. As she's praying, her trouble is increasing. As she's, she did eight hours, nothing happened. She came back with depression. She did eight hours of tongues on the mountain and came back with what? That is to show you that prayer on its own is nothing except for the fact that God came. And that is why, before we really pray here, we gain ascendancy. The whole thing about ascendancy is touching the substance of the throne of the Christ because that is where administration comes from. The powers of prayer that is correct in the New Testament perspective is a, an activity of ascension. Before Christ died and resurrected, the activities of the prayer, the best you can do is to come to the holy place. Because the altar of incense is at the holy place. But by the time, are you with me? By the time Jesus died and resurrected, because the book of Hebrews is 
a New Testament representative of what Leviticus was. Because what the book of Hebrews shows us is ordinances and patterns of priesthood as it pertains to new covenant perspective. That is the same thing that Leviticus captured. So when we come to the new, we now found out that the altar of incense have left the holiest, the holy place and entered the holiest of all. It was such a dramatic event that the translator, translators of the scripture, we are finding it hard because of what they know about that scenario. The, the type, the shadow in the old covenant shows that the altar of incense is in the holy place. But when they came to the book of Hebrews, they found out that the man that wrote the book of Hebrews actually put the altar of incense in the holiest of all. Are you with me? That is, that is profound. It, what happens on the altar of incense? That's, that's where prayer goes on. Are you getting the point? He's trying to say that New Testament prayer, New Covenant prayer is not an activity that is outside of the holiest of all. So the implication of Jesus dying and resurrecting is that prayer is now in the spirit and by the spirit. Because the spirit represents what? The holiest of all. The body, spirit, soul. The, the body, soul, and spirit. So that is why now we pray in tongues because praying in tongues is both praying in the spirit and by the spirit. You can pray in understanding too and it's praying in the spirit. But it's not praying by the spirit or with the spirit. Are you getting the point? I don't have time to go there. If you have question, consult our former teaching. The point I'm trying to make here is that we, the new covenant practice necessitated that prayer has to now be done in the spirit. And the reason it is possible is because the human spirit has been regenerated. What does it mean to be regenerated? It simply means that the powers of immortality has hit your spirit. That your spirit has received regeneration, resurrection. So the Bible said that being made alive, after me, being made alive, you are made alive if you were dead. Is it not true? That means our spirit was made alive. The implication of that is that the resources that Christ has from his throne can be transmitted directly to your spirit without any hindrance. All things, what? Being equal. So all you need to do, all we do in prayer when we come, is to approximate to that energy level where Jesus can release from his throne of administration, the throne of the Christ, what we need for today. Are you getting the point? So when we come, we don't just assume that we are making progress. We make sure. And the way you make sure is what? To gain ascendance. And the thing about ascendancy is that it's organic. Are you getting the point? So, maybe some of us that have been here since morning, do we need to gain ascendance? We have been there since morning. There was no break from one to another, from one to another. Even if there was any break and you answered one call that disoriented you, in 10 minutes, 5, 10 minutes, you would have gathered yourself. But if it's, let's assume... Uh, Mr. Chikanan came back from market and the, your goods that is supposed to come back is still at is still at Lagos. Is, are you getting the point? Uh, the goods, as he has not entered, you are not coordinated. Goods that is probably worth millions. So, uh, you will be, all those things will be on you and then you come here, you say you want to pray and they are praying you are doing your mind is not here. Your mind is where your goods are. Where a man's treasure is. Where is what's happening there? <laughs> oh, God, your money day off. You, your heart is, you will not know your heart is there. Until call enter. You will just run out while like your heart is there. Your heart is there. Because if, if it's that somebody is owing you, should I come out from here? I should come out from here, B. If somebody is owing you and he told you, I'm going to call you by 5 p.m., 5.30, if you are here, will your heart be in what we are doing? That kind of person needs to press beyond the encasing of the soul to gain ascendance in the spirit. Part of what is holding you down is the curse of this world. Such a man cannot break through to the layers of God. 
and the things that God wants to do is trapped in certain energy levels. He cannot come down to that point. He will tell, come up here. And except a man comes up to that plane, it will seem as if you are coming and nothing is happening to you. Just because I say it always, just because you are here physically at Newe, doesn't mean you are in our meeting location. Our meeting location is not physical. It's in the spirit. The mountains of God. And when you come there, sometimes you need to eat two dosages of bread to journey to Horeb, the Mount of Encounter. That's what they told Elijah. He said, eat and drink, for the journey is great. He thought it was, he thought it was something you can do. God knows what this year holds. The adversities that is about to come. And he knows that you can sail through it as if nothing is happening. Because the testimony of the righteous that has latched on to the grace and the possibility and power it takes to run his days is that when all that are saying, there is a casting down. What will you say? That is not just confession. It is an experience. It's a testimony of your everyday living. In fact, sometimes you don't need to say it. People will tell you, there is something, deep. you know the... You know they experience this in Nigeria. You know some of you don't know. There is a way we pray here. We are insulated from the cares of Nigeria. Nigeria can make you to. Let me stop. Nigeria is blessed. In Jesus name. Oh. Ah. But, 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 but. <laughs> but, but. with me say amen. amen the holy spirit moves and if he moves we find him the reason why god mostly uses younger people when he wants to do fresh things in a land huh? is because the older people are stuck with what he used to do and how he used to do it and then when the Holy Ghost moves, because, see, God is not, God is still grateful eh, with the way you served those older people, the way they served him, that he is grateful. So he cannot take everything away from them. So he leaves one gift or one church members. As you die, they also die. You don't notice that is 50, 80, 70 people that is with you. If you can't get the young generation, something is wrong. You are not where the Holy Ghost is. And I don't care your age. I say it and I, I dare you to say it anywhere. If God wants to bring a fresh move anytime, he uses the youth, the young people. That's a fact. If, if you find an old person there, he is young in the heart. There are many things older people can't do. Like I know we, you see the way we pray. I cannot push you too much to pray, pray that way. <laughs> Jesus Christ. There is a day that I would have pushed you, but not now. If you like, don't pray now. Wait till you are. If God wants you to do that thing, you will still do it. And the, the requirement to meet up doesn't go down. We have received a kingdom that cannot be what? Moved. There are at least three interpretations to that scripture. One of it is that if you read that scripture well, it began to say that things will be shaken in heaven and on earth and the things that will remain will remain. That, that is a prophetic interpretation of the last days. Another thing it means is that the kingdom defines the exact expectation of God from our life. And it is those expectations, those demands, they are fixed. after me fixed. So it doesn't change. Probably because probably because you now did new haircut. Who did new haircut here? Huh? Like Dennis, you now did new hair. <laughs> like Sister Chidema, you now did new hair. Probably there is a wedding that is available, but the demand is no wedding now. Find Jesus. I, some people will not greet me now. I don't care. You have not noticed I don't care. 
the earlier you notice, the better. Because my message will change you faster. You, I notice you have noticed. Your, my, you, it will work faster in your life. If you are saying, because, are you getting my point? If the demand of the kingdom on your life as of now is, is fixed, you can only align to that structure. The structure doesn't change for you. You are the one that will realign to fit in. The only thing the scripture kept for you is what is called grace. Say after me, grace. What I'm trying to say is this. If what you did not do at age 25, at 50, if God wants to do, you will still do it. The only thing now is that you will receive what? <laughs> because God will be partial. God will be, will be unjust to hand over to you something that there is a requirement that is fixed for a man to enter there. The only way he can give you advantage is to give you much more grace than, than is normal. That's what Paul said. He said, what brought me to where I am is the God that is, the grace of God that is mightily at work, what? In me. He did not say that God now made me idle and then gave me something. No, he gave me grace so that I will work in such a way that no man can deny the apostleship of God upon my life. Because grace can make people say, Pai! even though we want, don't want to, I say, you know, there were days people, if they call me apostle, now to mock me. Oh. <laughs> I tell you, uh, the apostle, <laughs> they go just mock me. Ah, those days, I will, be, I will be sad in my heart. Do you know what happened? God did not console me. <laughs> God did not console me. What he did is to give me what? More grace. More grace. More grace. So much grace. What you need is grace. So much grace that even Satan himself will say, this is a man of grace. Satan will know that you, when they go to hell, they are talking about you. They say, this guy is disturbing us. He's carrying people away from us. If we allow him... When we were planning for sonship conference, a principality rose, a female principality, and he said, I'm the one that makes people rich in this territory. How are you people getting money without consulting me? He said, I'm, I'm the one that even makes pastors rich. <laughs> ah. So we fought, fought after many things. Do you know what now happened? The spirit now said, I have given up my trouble now. is not that this man is doing this thing. but that Because in that vision, some of my guys, my, my brothers, one passed. Heavy man. Another passed. This is the way that we are passing in that spirit. Heavy man. The spirit said, my problem is not that this man is doing this thing. But it's the kind of people he is raising. What his people will do is even what I'm afraid of. If it's only him, we can cage him. He can become what he... There is so much man rising with brutality, with anger, and they are waiting to deal with Satan. If you are one of them, shout fire. I say, if you are one of them, shout fire. If you are one of them, shout fire. The mighty men of David. <laughs> Man like Shimea, he fought, he fought. See, the people that followed, that is one of David's men that I love so much. The one that fought till his hand cleft to his sword. Uh, what was it? Remind me his name. E Eliaza. Eliaza, son of Dodo. The guy fought until it became obvious he's physically tired. But he has made a vow in his soul. Because that kind of vow, you can't raise such men until you are su such a man. That was the kind of man that David was. David is the one that said, I will not give sleep to my eyelids, nor slumber to my eyes, till I find the resting place for the God of Jacob. Why can't you raise such men? David had died before the day of his death. Eh? 
he has started writing immortal things. He has died so much that his prophetic writings captured the days of the Messiah from the beginning to the end. Until the Messiah sat on the throne, even David still saw it. And he wasn't seeing it as a spectator. He was seeing it as a participator. He said in the book of Psalm chapter 110, the Lord said to my Lord, sit down at my right hand. He was a participator. When he came down there, a little bit of what he saw became a part of his life. Such encounter, eh? uh, there are kinds of encounters. There are encounters you just see things. But there are encounters you will have. What you saw will enter you. Such encounter is the one you come out. You don't tell people I encountered Jehovah. The light will shine. Because the men that we are with saw when before he became poor, they were on the journey. When the light shined, the Bible said all of them fell. Just that they are not seeing what Paul was seeing. They fell. The mighty men of David. <laughs> Brutal men. It didn't take time. They also became giant slayers. It didn't take time. They became what? Satan is in trouble. Satan is in trouble. Oh. He is in trouble. Oh. He is in trouble. Oh. <laughs> he is in trouble. Oh. Give me Simba just for two minutes. Satan is in trouble. Oh. In this last days, he is in trouble. Oh. Because you are here, he is in trouble. Oh. There is something God wants to do through your life. Because of you, Satan and darkness has never been in more trouble than now. Satan is in trouble. He is in trouble. He is in trouble. He is in trouble. Witches are in trouble. They are in trouble. They are in trouble. They are in trouble. Demons are in trouble. I can't die. Oh. Oh. Hey. Demons are in trouble. They are in trouble. They are in trouble. Witches are in trouble. They are in trouble. They are in trouble. <laughs> oh, asaka pariya bana kate. Wanto wanto abaka televento. Sadebi ambere kaponta. Iye ne mana kataria. I never sacate, Paracataria caparate, Uacaparatai, Sacatania, Aya, on your account. Satan is in trouble. Satan is in trouble. He is in trouble. He is in trouble. He is in trouble. Demons are in trouble. They are in trouble. They are in trouble. They are in trouble. Hey! 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 Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Hey, 
Yes. What is my
Mark, mark this period of your life. You will make the greatest progress you have ever made at any point of your life. Ujoku iriata. I worship. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Baruch Abba, Veshem Adona. I worship. Ujoku Eriata. I was Shirokudi. I was Ujoku Eriata. Is it? I was Shirokudi. Hey, Maggie, hey Jesus mighty things are happening a lot of things are happening now a lot of things things that have defied prayer the Lord has come down listen to me the Lord has come down he want to shake things he wants to move things. Ejimagi ejogo, ujoku eriaja. The one that answers my fire. I worship. Shirokudi. He wears fire as garment. I worship. I worship. Ujoku eriaja. I worship God is touching your life. God is touching your circumstance and situation. The storm is over, said the Lord. The storm is over, said the Lord. It's time to make move. It's time to take off. The siege is broken, said the Lord. Join me in five minutes. So I have five minutes to round up. This is what is called in broadcasting. What is it called? Huh? So we went on commercial break and we are back.
So I said that um, that when the Holy Spirit moves, it's called the season of transition. I'm still saying the same thing. This prayer we prayed now is what we would have prayed when I'm through. But I need to also show you the word of God so that you will have you have what to work with. So um, when seasons of transition comes, there are signs to show. And there are many. There are many. But I just want to show you like one or two that pertains to the prayer points we need to. Because what we are looking for is prayer point. It took me years to find out that it is hard to find prayer points. Those days, I used to have a lot of prayer points. So only for me to check at the end of the year and find out. So I try, go and check what I'm saying. Only for me to find out at the end of the year that not up to 30% was answered. What is wrong? It was James that said, there is something wrong with your prayer and that is why you are not receiving answers. You pray and pray what? And miss. What made a prayer? What, what, what is that ingredient in prayer that makes it something that is prayed and miss? He said because you have a fracture in your heart. The intent of your heart is to consume this. The result of your prayer is all about yourself on your lust. So you are already praying and miss. And that is why I have to put you people through for two days now that even if I'm not saying God will not do something for you, but wisdom, intelligence in priesthood makes you to understand that if God's purpose in your life is clashing with your own desire, God will never allow that thing you want to come to pass because his purpose in your life is superior to what you want. So the way to, are you getting the point? The way to get your needs solved faster, get it dealt with in prayer, is to find an intersection between your need and what you want and God's need and what God wants. So when the purpose of God clashes with your own desire, you will not need to pray for it. Are you getting the point? God will take it as an obligation to answer that prayer. That is the measure of prayer that Paul now said, much more than we can what? Ask or? That means there are three layers. There is a layer of asking. Then there is a layer where you did not get to even say it. You just thought it in your mind. And God did it. Has it happened to you before? But there is another one higher than it. He said there is a layer where you have ne neither said it, taught it. You don't even know that there is such a need like that. Still, God dealt with it. There are many accidents that God delivered us from that we never knew that there was even danger. <clears throat> that means, are you getting the point? If prayer will be productive in your life, then you need to keep aside many of your prayer points because you don't even know the need. From my understanding of spiritual, from my understanding of priesthood, especially spiritual intelligence, what can be holding your answer can be something small. And it can be, are you getting the point? It can be the clog in the whole wheel of progress, just something small. Because progress in life and in spirit is like a, a chain reaction. It's like a domino. Many times, all you need is to tip the first one. Are you getting the point? Once the first one is tipped, everything will start working. The same way, if it's not working, if you touch 20, none of the 20 will work. If you are up to 40, 50 years, yeah, it's easy for you to understand what I'm saying. When you have done four, five, six, seven things in this life, and none of them is producing the kind of result you expect, you will find out that none of your domino has been tipped yet. When, the, when it is tipped by the force of God, you will not touch others. They will just be touching itself. Are you getting my point? To, if you are with me, say amen. amen. Okay, so um, one of the signs that you have come, we have come into a transition season is encounters, self-time encounters. When God begins to grant men encounters, bring encounters on corporate basis, individual basis, then it means that you have come to a transition season in your life. And encounters can be in measures. Yeah? And it can be diversified. You can encounter a few things and a few persons. There, there is an encounter with men. And in this context, we call it encounter that you encounter with people that God has placed around your life to help you. There are people, if you don't encounter them, you will, you will make progress. Imagine if Saul did not encounter Samuel. 
He will just be moving around like another guy. But when the prophet Samuel came, he said, the spirit of the Lord God will come upon you and you will become what? Another man. So there are encounters. Some of you will have a fresh encounter with the word of God, with the scripture, with a message, with, the, with prayer, with, with the Holy Ghost. Some of you will have encounter with Jesus, layers of encounter, you know. Um, there, there, there are kinds of encounter. You know, there, there is what we call optasis encounter. You know, encounter. How many of you, you have seen Jesus here? I know my sister Chidema have seen Jesus. <laughs> you know, you can see Jesus and nothing happened to you. You just saw. Uh, are you getting the point? It's not the same thing with what Paul encountered. When Paul encountered Jesus, it's not just that he heard something. Something about the person he encountered entered him until he died. He carried that. In fact, the, the um, basis of his apostolic authority is on that measure of encounter. So it is not just so when he tells men, when men see the things coming out of his life, he tells them that this thing is traced to the encounter I had with Jesus. So what he had, what Paul had, which is the opposite of what we have today, is encounters that is in need of explanation. And because of that, he was moving from city to city, soliciting for what? Utterance. So that he would be able to communicate. He said he has seen too much. In fact, he came and told us that there is an unutterable dimension. Are you getting my point? That means that this man has seen and heard and been opened up to so much revelation that he needs utterance to communicate. And I need to tell you, what a people doesn't know is that it takes utterance to communicate the mind of God. I say you can even want to say what I'm saying, but you can't say it. You, as you finish saying, something will be telling you, you did not say it well. That thing that did not say it well is what is called utterance. So somebody can say in five minutes what you are struggling to say in two hours. That is called what? So you will now speak, and everybody will say you bless them. Are you a magician? It takes all trance to bless you. I don't want to go there, but no, I will not go there. Kai, kai, kai. Holy Ghost, I'm back. The second one is demands and consecration. When we come into season of transition, God begins to make, you might not know. I'm trying to say, in case you don't know you are in the season of transition, when you start having series and kinds of encounters, you should call your mind back and begin to um, check whether you are intelligent enough in the spirit to know whether a season is breaking up on you. That are you in a transition season? Are you getting the point? And second is if God begins to put fresh demand upon your life, fresh consecration, fresh what? Demand. Then you will know that ah, it seems as if something wants to happen. And some of them are the things that naturally you will never do. But God will say, do it. I don't have time to quote a lot of scriptures, but if you go to the book of Acts chapter 10, many of you are conversant with what happened there. A new season was breaking out, and God wanted to reach the Gentiles. Are you with me? He is looking for a vessel that he will use. So the most probable person to use is the chief apostle of that day. And the chief apostle of that day is who? Peter. So Peter had an encounter, and a, a, a sheet was lowered down from heaven. Huh? And when it was lowered down, all manner of four-footed, and you know, a Jews, they don't touch things like that. And, you know, snake. I know if you're an Anewi man, or you're from Anedo, you, they know they shop snake. You don't shop snake. We know they touch, we know they, they used to say that he's Mwadiana. Well, it's not my Mwadiana, but at least <laughs> we know they touch him. Amen? So, just that's the kind of person Peter is. So they brought all those. In the shop chameleon, it was there. Snake was there. There are people that love snake or snake meat. There is a brother here. I, I will not call your name. That's even the kind of meat they enjoy. He, when Peter saw it, he said, the, the voice told him what? Peter, rise, what? Kill and because if he just said kill, he said, Kai, the anointing is on me. He will slaughter all of them and bury them. 
But he told him, Peter, what? Kill and Peter said, Kill to fear. That I have not eaten anything. Anything that is foul, polluted, unclean, since I was young. He said, Not so, Lord. Say after me, not so, Lord. You see, fresh demand is being placed on him. Eh? And he told God, Kai, I can't do this one. I, I, I will do anything. I, I will do anything for you. But this one, I can't do it. God, I can do anything for you. But this Navy G, is there no other way? God can make all kinds of demand on you. And something that is easy for one person can be very hard for another. Are you getting the point? There are people, God will be saying, NIVG is easy for you, but to forgive is hard. So God will put that demand on you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? For some people, to pray is easy, but to give, who they can't give. If you're a prayer person, make sure you give. One of the greatest problems of prayer ministries is that they are very poor. Except the person there begins to teach people how to give, they, are, they will be poor. Because if you are a prayer person, you normally think that prayer is the only thing it takes to balance up all your ecosystem. It's not only prayer power we have. We have word power. We have giving power. That, those, these three things are the three power factors in the kingdom. According to the book of Matthew chapter 6. Is it not true? Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 6, when you give, he didn't say if you give. Is it not true? When you fast, he didn't say if you fast. When you pray, he didn't say if you pray. So fasting, pray, these are power factors. You want power? Power man, you want power. Am I asking you? I know you want power. You say, you say, uh huh. So that's number two. I don't have time. The, should I give more? Let me just give one more. And then this last one is where I want to close. Mark chapter 4. Rather, let me start like this. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18. I didn't say 2 verse 1. I say 18. It's not up to 18. Check first. Sorry, first, first, first Thessalonians 2 18. Let's read it together. One, two, ready, go. This thing is not one, something that happened once. Ago. He said that we have been trying to come to you. But what happened? Satan hindered us. I said I don't understand. Can Satan hinder that mighty apostle? The way I used to see Paul. I don't know if you people used to see Paul like that. I used to see Paul as a man that have answer to everything. But no. Satan hindered Paul. You will not understand the implication of this kind of hindrance until we go to the book of Mark chapter 4. Let's see Mark chapter 4. Because for every time Satan hinders a man, it is because you have come into a season. There is a transition in the spirit. So my third point here is contention. Say after me, contention. When there is unexplained contentions on almost every issue of your life, just know that there is what? A transition. Something is about to break forth from your life. And Satan is trying every means to stop it from happening. Are you getting the point? Without it, there can't be that kind of contention. See again, look again, and see that there is a reason why Satan is contending. Making sure things don't rhyme up and arrange and order itself the way it should be. He has seen something. He has seen something. Let me see the last five verses. 
the last five verses quickly. I worship last five verses go and look for Joshua's glasses and give him give him his glasses stop where if you are where if you think I'm talking to you give him so we will finish this class verse 35 he says and, and the same day when the evening was come he said unto them what let's, let's say it together let's what when you hear Passover, it means transition. It's time to pass over, brothers and sisters. It's time to change into a new realm. God is calling us. God is calling you. And this call can be, are you getting the point? It can be personalized. It is a corporate call on the house. It's even a co Let me stay within this jurisdiction. It's a corporate call, but yet... It's a call on us. So sometimes if God is making a corporate call, you need to take it personal and apply it on your own life so that you don't leave, you are not left behind. That's what I'm trying to say. That God can move. And if you don't move with God, you'll be left where God was. And I need to tell you that the grace of God is only released concurrent with what he's doing now. So I, I mean, if you are behind, then you don't need grace. It's only the person that is where God is, is and doing what God is doing that needs fresh grace to execute the assignments of God. So th that is why anytime Jesus wake up in the morning, he said, what I see my father do, I do. You can't be doing another thing and expect it to work. And when, are you with me? When you are there where you are supposed to be, you are in alignment, you are in that present revelational position of the Holy Spirit, then you will see that there are, this might be hard though, but you will see that there is grace and progress. Stagnation will be over because you are riding on the wings of the moving spirit. The God we serve does not trek. Our God is carried on the wings of the wind. And all we do is to glide with him. That's what the book of Isaiah said. He said that they that wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. That's why we are fasting. So that we renew our strength. A time we come we will mount up with wings as the eagles. We will run, we will not be tired. We will walk, we will not what? Faint. Because we tarried with the everlasting spirit and then the um, instrument, the facility, the civilization by which the whole of heaven is powered and quickened and made alive is what is filling our members in such a way that you can run for the next five years and what you gathered in 50 days is able to sustain you oh elijah eat wait on god wait on god. stop being in a hurry some people any small thing they come any small thing they come and you cannot finish one thing that's why you can't finish anything physically because you have not been able to finish one thing spiritually 50 days fasting you three days you eat that's why your life is like this have you ever successfully finished or any of our 50 days say the truth you have finished one I wanted to catch you, but give me my scripture in the book of Mark, please. I don't have time. Okay, let us pass over onto the other side. 36. 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there was also with him other little ships. Okay. And there arose what? There was no storm until they said, let's get over to the other side. Everywhere was calm. It was enjoying. So some people wonder, since, since I had the encounter and God told me there is a call on my life, that's when everything started getting bad. Since God told me, give me, give me three days dry fasting. Go to your village and do the as soon as you finish the fast, that's when everything starts turning upside down. You don't understand the shape of the realm of the spirit. Eh? Something is about to break forth, and Satan is bringing his last weapon, hoping you will be deceived in such a way to think he is more powerful than he is. You just need to persevere a little more, and day and then the day will break forth with force.
I will tap. I worship I worship I worship in Jesus' name. Listen. And there arose a great storm of the wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. Verse 38. And he was in the hinder part of the ship. <laughs> Jesus is humorous. Are you seeing what is happening here? Jesus is inside somebody's ship with this gray storm that is about to swallow their life. And he was comfortably sleeping. He was not disturbed that you are about to die. Until a man raised his voice and said, Master! Master, carest thou not that we what? If you like, don't cry out now. Stay there. You say, I have Jesus. I have the Holy Ghost. I know, I know who I am. I, just, I know nothing bad can happen to me. We that have Christ in us. We that, as if the person laboring to see the prophecy come to pass has Satan in him. The Bible was, Paul was telling Timothy, according to the prophecies that has gone ahead in your life, what do you do? What a good see let me tell you if satan can't stop it he wouldn't be fighting if there is no possibility of limiting it, stopping it bringing down its potency sometimes god will plan that something huge will come your way probably in business maybe 10 million by the time it's coming this one will happen this one will happen this one will happen. by the time 10 million you saw in the spirit is coming it will be hundred thousand holy ghost I know some of you are young. You don't understand that this thing is real life scenario that happens all the time. The allocation you had in the spirit was 10 million. As far as God is concerned, eh? okay, let me, as far as God is concerned, they have released 10 million for you. If you like, don't labor to collect it here. In heaven, they will be rejoicing and say, Kyle, we have blessed our son. We have blessed our son. Only for you to come to the world and, and he did not reach. He said, eh, God, the, the, that night I was sleeping, I was too tired. <laughs> Kai. Until you touch what you need, sleep is not your friend. Hey, I'm not saying don't sleep, sleep, but the sleep that, that is obviously hindering you from laying hold, especially within the window where there is a release of grace for you to do such. It might not be like that all the time. Understand? It's not always like this. Oh. There are seasons of your life you see a lot of grace to do a lot of things. Other seasons you want to do that thing you did before. You try, you fail. Because there is no grace. Once such grace comes, that is one of the proofs of transition anyway. You will know that God wants you to ride on that wind and achieve something. Okay, watch. Verse 39. And he arose and what? Rebuke the wind and said unto the sea, What? Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was what? Great calm. Let there be great calm in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. But this is not where I'm going. Verse, the next verse. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? <laughs> the next verse. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is what? That even the wind and the sea, what? Next verse. And they came, are you with me? Oh, there is no break in transmission. Just because we enter chapter 5, there is, there, there is really in the flow of story, this thing has not stopped. They are still moving. They just crossed over. 
And when they crossed over, the story continued. Can you follow this story now? So there is no difference between those last six verses and this chapter five. He said, and they came over onto the other side of the sea into the country of what? This is, this part explains the former part. And when he, he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with what? I know. Huh. Verse 3. Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains has been plucked asunder by him. And the fetters, I've seen a young lady that is small, caught heavy men like this. I was watching one video, I don't know where they got it from. I got over. A pastor was doing deliverance. He now touched one guy. Prayed for him. Prayed for him. One usher that is in the flesh. As the guy was doing like this, the usher now came and held him in the waist. The guy he held in the waist now turned and held him. Took him up and wanted to do him smack down. The guy don't go up to land with his back. Oh God, don't do ushering in the flesh. Some people are loaded. You will be seeing the small lady is not her power. Neither could any man tame him. Verse 5. And always night and day he was in the mountains. And in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. Okay. But when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran what? And did what? Okay. And cried with a loud voice. And said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou art torment me. How, how did this man know who Jesus is? I went for a crusade at, at um, Otoke. When the, when the whole thing was happening, I said, shout fire. They shouted, shout fire. Then people began to manifest. When I wanted to cast out the demon from one lady, the demon now said, we know you. We are waiting for you. This is my first time of being at Otoke. How did they know me? You better believe that Satan does more research than you think. You are the only one that is casual with your life, thinking that nobody knows you. Some people have taken your name very far in the spirit. You are just here doing, doing shagande, shagadagada. Your name is going more far. And the people doing it, some of them are not sleeping. I have not seen any serious priest that sleeps all the time. If you see some of these heavy net, you can't do what they are doing. They fast. I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Verse 8. For he said unto him, For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he said, What is thy name? He said, Legion and all that. Now look at verse 10. And he besought him much that he would not what? So what the problem here, are you getting the point? The problem here is that there is territorial contention. The appearance of Jesus in this territory will mean that the powers of Satan will go down. So Satan sent demons ahead. Are you getting the point? To go and make sure that they never arrived at Gadaren. If Jesus as much as steps his foot on that land, that land is liberated. A new season will come. Revival will come. Move of God will break out. Huh? And it's the same thing you can bring it down to every single thing in your life. Huh? Satan will never allow that to happen. He, he, the whole storm is not about the storm. It's to, it's to make sure that Jesus doesn't come. Paul said, I would have been with you for long. But what happened? Satan in that. Don't think, you know, I know we say that uh, Satan is not another. I need to tell you that. Hmm. Satan is not somebody you should say is not insignificant. 
Jesus did not say that Satan is insignificant. If you see the amount of titles that Jesus gave Satan, you will know how much he knew that that man is powerful. He called him the prince of this world. Is it not true? He also called him the God of this world. Jesus doesn't use words carelessly. If he says it then, it must be so. When he said, I will give you this word if you worship him, Jesus did not say you didn't have it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is the names, although there are also other bad ones. Like he called him liar. Called him, called him a thief. Called him a murderer. Who did Satan kill? That made him a murderer. That's the teaching for another day. So the problem now is that they don't want... They don't want Jesus to enter this country. Because if Jesus ever arrives this country, then that country has been collected for God. I will show you now. They show, let, okay, let me just read one more verse and then we we'll go. Verse 19. 19, quickly. Joshua. How be it Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, what? Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord had done for thee and had had compassion on thee. Verse 20. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus has done for him and all men did what? What Decapolis means is ten cities. This prince, are you getting what I'm saying? The demon that is preventing Jesus from coming to their coast is in charge of ten cities. So Satan has held ten cities down. And that is how it happens. Demons can be walking in a land, but there is a principal spirit. And if there is a principal spirit, there must be a principal priesthood. And if there is a principal priesthood, there must be a man that is servicing that priesthood. Many times, for God to give you inroad into a territory, into a family, to break a siege, sometimes for God to break that siege, somebody must die. It's a fact. Should I stop? The mercy of God means that somebody needs to die. Meanwhile, God is showing you mercy, but somebody died. Because that person is representing the priesthood that powers eh, the stranglehold of the enemy over families and over people. Eh? So when God comes and says, I have shown you mercy, the implication of I have shown you mercy is that judgment comes on others. Because if these ten cities will be liberated, then those demons have to be sent out of the, the, the town. Can you pray, oh God, show me, show me that one point where Satan is generating the energy that is limiting me. All you need is for your eyes to open. Show me that location. Show me the mystery of that priesthood, of that priest, so that I will target my fasting and prayer, my energy at it and break it. You need to know it. Don't just be shooting gun everywhere. No. You need specificity. You need you need to know exactly. Can you pray? Can you pray for one minute or two? What you need now is intelligence. <laughs>